Solar Warlocks, you have a problem. But it is actually a good problem to have. There's too many great options for exotic armors which really complements a subclass. I've shortlisted 5 exotic armors which exclusively boost solar, and a further 3 which aren't exclusively solar, but just so happen to be used quite a lot. The first I want to cover is Dawn Chorus. The reason being is a common theme of Solar Warlock is to use the Well of Radiance in pretty much any situation. Even if you don't want to, your teammates will probably say otherwise. Truly born to daybreak, horse to well. But Dawn Chorus breaks this trend by offering a huge boost to the daybreak super, as well as massively increasing scorch damage. Daybreak gets a 90% damage increase off a rip, and will also apply 30 scorch on each hit. With these effects, the super goes from relatively mid to an actual damage contender. Single target damage is hitting for over 800k, or it could also just be used as a roaming super. While it's not instant like the Nighthawk Golden Gun, it can be used for higher total damage. Scorch from any source also deals 200% extra damage, and considering the fact that you can simply run Kindling Trigger to have all solar weapons instantly apply Scorch, this will be an ever present buff. Scorch stacks also have a bonus of returning melee energy when using this exotic. So essentially, big solar damage, scorching ignitions, ability regen, but no well of radiance. This makes the Dawn Chorus best in solo content, or if you already have a well of radiance user. Or you know, you just want to use something a little bit different. It's effective and offers a unique playstyle, but as I've mentioned, you might get a few groans from teammates who are just looking for someone to use Well of Radiance. But what do they know? Actually, on the topic of Well, we might as well get it out of the way. The Phoenix Protocol. Kills in a Well of Radiance by yourself or allies grant super energy. Up to 50% progress towards the next. Massively increasing super uptime. But not really a whole lot more to say on this. It's really just the default for safety first activities. Here's the notes I had on this one. You really just play like you normally would, but you have more super energy. It is worth noting though that Ember of Combustion is actually incredible using the Phoenix Protocol. It makes Solar Super final blows trigger an ignition, and while in a Well of Radiance, weapon damage is treated as super damage. So solar weapons will cause an ignition on any kill, but this season you could just use Razor Precision for the same effect but at all times. In the future this combo will be worth using. Expect to see a lot of these in GMs, and it makes sense in that type of content. It's the highest survivability option available, and you don't really need to build into it other than making sure you have the correct super. It's also low maintenance, meaning you don't have to juggle any buffs, or use certain weapons to get its effect. Just be sure that you do actually use the Well of Radiance as much as possible. There's no point holding it until next game, when the whole point of your exotic is to spam as much as possible. Some bracers are the first grenade exotic, and spoilers, the best of a bunch. To make any use of these, you need to be using the solar flare grenades, listed in game just as solar grenades. I'd also recommend running the aspects heat risers and touch of flame, alongside the incinerator snap melee, as together it will enable melee energy to always be available, and increase the potency of solar grenades, which will be getting spammed. The premise of this exotic is so simple, yet effective. Get a final blow using the incinerator snap melee, then use the 5 second window of sunbraces ready to spam as many solar grenades as possible. The main trick here though is consistently getting the incinerator snap final blow, and recharging it quickly. To do this, aim at the feet of the target with incinerator snap, this will ensure more splash damage hits the target. This could be enough to take them out, but if not, will trigger an ignition. If this ignition is caused by incinerator snap, this will also enable sunbraces. Also, any kill while airborne will return melee energy due to heat risers. This can even be something just as simple as slightly jumping off the ground. It all counts. And while this build is viable anywhere, including more difficult content, it shines the most in ad heavy encounters. So dungeons and raids are the natural home for some braces. Where they work, they work exceptionally, providing one of the best ability loops, and you do still have Well of Radiance in the back pocket, should it be needed. The other grenade enhancer is the Starfire Protocol. This time you will be needing to run fusion grenades. And similar to some bracers, the aspect touch of flame is basically mandatory. In the past, this was used as a boss DPS option, 
as weapon hits would return a lot of fusion grenade energy, and by using a faster RPM weapon or damage over time options, even more energy was returned. This is still an effectively exotic, but heavily reduced from what it was. But for the weapon hits to turn into grenade energy, you do however need to be standing in either a well of radiance or empowering rift. And no one's going to complain about the well, but an empowering rift is a little bit limiting, with healing or phoenix dive being preferred by most players. The second way to grant grenade energy is on final blows, which moves it away from boss DPS and more into general use even more. But there's a workable loop here. Empowered weapon final blows grant 20% fusion grenade energy each. Fusion grenade final blows grant 100% class ability energy. So you can drop a rift, charge up a fusion grenade, and then use that grenade to instantly charge your next rift. It's fine, and the fusion grenades are very strong, but it's probably a little bit too much of a change from regular gameplay to really still be effective. This exotic could be used in a grenade heavy build, demolitionist weapons can still benefit here, and you do get two grenade charges as long as fusion grenades are equipped. Though the option to auto load demo rockets is still there in a way, but it's mainly now to enhance grenades against adds, which for some braces does better. Look, Wings of Sacred Dawn, it's a bit of a gimmick, at least for PvE content. If you aim while in the air, you will remain in place and give them 50% airborne effectiveness so your shots don't somehow end up in Narnia. It does have an additional effect now of refilling solo weapons mags if you get an airborne solo final blow. So you can effectively go infinite as long as there's enemies to target and you have some restoration effect looping with Ember of Empyrean. Is it worth using over other options though? In content where enemies don't offer much of a threat, and sure, but you know, so is everything else. For end game effectiveness, I doubt it, but if you are looking for a funny gimmick or a way to have an infinite mag, then this does work. It's likely to have more of a place in PvP where you can get unexpected angles on the opposition, but you do still have the problem of being a quite easy target while airborne. Now these following exotics are not solar exclusively, but do massively enhance solar builds in a way that they just have to be mentioned. They've a seen attack. This grants heavy ammo breaks to teammates if they finish a high priority target such as elites or champions once you've tagged to them with any trace rifle. You'll also get a special ammo brick yourself on this condition being met. Extremely effective in champion dense activities such as gems, and with a well coordinated team this is probably overall the best option. It does require adapting a build to play around it though, and would be even better if a fire team member is using Aeon Gauntlets, so you also gain increased heavy drops. If a team isn't coordinated though, a lot of its value is lost, as it is under the assumption that the increased heavy ammo drops are being effectively utilised. So for randomly match made activities, or activities with a low amount of high value targets, something what just directly benefits yourself might be the better option. Rain of Fire, not really a solo exclusive now since it also works with Weave Walk, but it is quite potent with Icarus Dash for getting out a lot of damage in a short time window. Worth considering if you need to really juice a boss DPS phase, remember that dashing will reload all of your weapons and not just the one equipped, so cycling through them all is the most effective. Its secondary effect of granting Radiant on Fusion Rifle final blows it's also reduced in potency this season as Radiant can be achieved by just landing crits with any solo weapon. Finally, Apotheosis Veil. Wouldn't be suggesting this one in any form before this season, but it does have a place now, but it is also certainly a swap exotic. So for equipment lock content, I wouldn't really suggest it. When you can swap, it should be done just before your super. Its effect will enhance abilities for 8 seconds after a super's cast massively increasing their recharge rate. So you can pop a well of radiance, then spam fusion grenades and snap melees to add an additional damage and ignitions. It's sort of like rain of fire in a way, but for abilities this time rather than weapons. So that's the lot. But which one is the best right now? It just depends on the activities. So I rated them for GMs, raids or dungeons, or just regular content. And here's the lists. The other thing is what you're looking for. For a support role in more difficult content, or pushing the more offensive parts of the solar kit, for online or even dungeons or raids. Xenotaph offers the most for support, but requires planned execution, while Phoenix Protocol is the easiest support option to use. 
while Dawn Chorus or Sunbreakers can massively improve the offensive parts of the kit. Thank you for watching.